relax. Having stayed at home for about five months without looking at the book, yes. during that five months, mm -hmm. it made me the regrets and the stress was what God wanted to use to make me what he wanted me to be. The more I regretted, the more I was stressed, the more I felt a void within me, pushing me to be much more closer to the church. Right. And so I spent that time, the five months at home, either at home working, manually, yes. or in the church praying. Seeking God. At home working, in the church praying. And I knew my journey of academics was not going to end well. One day before the national exam, which I had already registered for anyway, mm -hmm. I was invited by school to go and do what we call rehearsal. That is basically preparation for the exam the following day. I went and I did rehearsal and the following day we, we began our exams. Mm -hmm. We did the exams. And I was sure that there was nothing much that was going to come out of that. Because for five months, about five months, That's we a very long disconnected time. from school, disconnected right. from books. Yes. I did my exam, and after one month, the results came out. Mm -hmm. I went courageously to the school to, to get to know my results. Yes. To my surprise, when I arrived at school, I had passed the exam oh. to the requirement of what I had asked for. You will wonder what did, had I asked for. Yes. I want now, to. this mm -hmm. is the point. Mm -hmm. During those five months when I was frequenting the church, yes. I was making a prayer. And I was telling God, you know what, God, mm -hmm. if you can just save me from this and help me to pass this exam. Yes. I'll be all yours. Wow. If you help me to pass this exam, I'll be all yours. Um, I'll come to serve you. Yes, but also, were you not questioning? Didn't you, at one point in your life, question God? Why did you take my mother? Why did you take my dad? But, my grandpa? But that was the basic characteristic of my day-to-day -day life. That was the ingredient number one, questioning. Wondering why? Why me? What did I wrong? What did I do wrong to deserve all this? Yes. Yeah. In fact, so much such that even at that time when I was suspended from school, mm -hmm. although after reflecting I could see that it was my it was my mistake, but I still had a, a finger On raised against God. But because let me take you a little bit back. Your school, they knew your circumstances, what you've gone through. They knew very well. Okay, couldn't, couldn't they have mercy on you? This is a child who lost the mother, didn't know the father, met the father in his coffin. I mean, that is the empathy. Whether there? the school knew that I met my father for the first time in the, in the coffin, I'm not sure if they really knew that. But okay. mm -hmm. they knew that I was coming from a struggling family. That much they knew. They also knew that all along, all the four, three and a half years, I was a good student. That was a fact. But that one mistake uh, deleted all those. I'm not sure if they ever got interested to make a follow-up about me. I don't know about that. All I know is that I stayed home mm -hmm. until the day of exam. And I went back and I did exam and life. Was... Yes. When I went to recollect my results at school, mm -hmm. I was surprised that I made it. You made it. I passed very well with the qualification of going to the university. Despite the five months that you were not in school. That physically. is for the first time when it became very clear to me mm -hmm. This passing of exam is not about me. It's not my intelligence. No. It's not my effort. This is not me. 
This is God. There must be something strange in this. Yeah. It's not me. It was very clear. I went back home and informed my uncles, you know what, this is what I got at school and passed the they, they, Nobody believed me. <laughs> And it was in the evening, my uncle had to travel from home to go to school to, to, confirm, verify. to verify. And he yes. went and he verified mm -hmm. and he came back. He was just quiet. He did not say anything. Yeah. And then after some days, I informed them, you know what? Uh, thank you so much for the support you've given me. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. But now, after having passed my exams, I want to go to the seminary. I had never shared with them that I had that intention because they knew I was becoming a lawyer. That's what I had always spoken about. Yes. And you have, go, you have passed your exams, you have good qualifications to go and pursue what you wanted. So yeah. they expected me to speak about law, but I told them, you know what? Me, I want to go to the seminary. I want to become a priest. Please, please, yeah. one, one minute, please. How, so what, sh how did you decide to shift? You were clear you wanted to become a lawyer. Now you want to become, you want to go into seminary. Mm -hmm. How did you even know about this seminary? During those days, I was frequenting the church. Mm -hmm. I happened to have a friend. Mm -hmm who is also right now a priest. Okay. For him, for many years, it was clear to him that he wanted to become a priest. And okay. He was not. So when I was going to church, mm -hmm. I was actually hiding behind his back. Remember, I was using that as an opportunity to run away from the stress that was at home. Yes. Such that when I am not working at home manually, when I'm not doing that, any opportunity I get, I better spend it in the church. And when I spend it in the church, I need some support, someone to give me some support in the church. And that was that friend. For he, him, he was going, it was normal for him to go to the church. But for me, I was going because I needed to run away from this, this torture at home. Yes. So I went to the home. But... When I went at home, because I was running away from this torture, there at church, I realized that the more I spend time at church, I forget everything that happens when I'm at home. I feel more at peace. Okay, because they I embraced you. As soon as uh, I get into the church, I'm more happy. Uh -huh. As soon as I enter into the church building, and enter into prayer, I feel I am more connected with to that to whom I'm praying. Yes, you found some peace. So that experience mm -hmm. in itself convinced me that the prayer I was making Worked. was not just a prayer that was coming from my head. It was a prayer that the heart was communicating to my brain, coming out through my mouth. God... If you help me to make it in this exam, this coming exam, if you help me to make it, yes. I'm all yours. I'll, I'll be there to serve you. And that prayer was answered. And when it was answered, mm -hmm. I did not feel obliged to go to the seminary. No. I made a very happy and free choice to go to the seminary. Why? Why? I remembered those many times when I used to pray, when I used to think I was running away from the torture. I spent time in the church and I was feeling at peace. I was feeling connected. I was feeling as if something was renewing me. I remember all that. And they convinced those small, small experiences. They convinced me that that is where I belong. Okay. Ah, I insisted with my uncles. I told them whether you do what to do, I'm going. And they tried to say no. Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, this seminary thing, people have tried and they go there. It takes a long time in the first place. And mm -hmm. sometimes you can be asked to leave after you have wasted like nine years or eight years. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, I know about that, but I uh, will go anyway. 
Mm -hmm. I know it is risky, but I'll go. They said, you see, you see, your mother died and you are the only son. You see, you need to be married and have at least some children. I said, yes, I know about that, but I'll go to the seminary. I'll go to the seminary. So it never sat well with them yeah. at that time, right? So much such that to go to the, that seminary that I was speaking about, mm -hmm. to go, yes. I had to sneak. Now this is the second time you're sneaking. Yeah. First from school mm -hmm. and now to go to the seminar. You mm -hmm. got it. I had to sneak. And okay. I went. But one of my aunt was always in support of me. As soon as I mentioned I want to go to the seminary, for her it was like a blessing. She said, go my son, go. But my uncles, because they are thinking about continuation of uh, lineage, no, no, no. So I went to the seminary anyway. Okay. After like five years. And where was the seminar? In uh, your where, where the did seminary, you go? I began in a place called Mombasa in the coastal part of Kenya. So you traveled to Mombasa? Yes, I sneaked and traveled to Mombasa. Okay. Yeah. And how did you know? And for your information, it yeah. was my first time to travel any distance beyond uh, 200 kilometers. Oh. <laughs> So how did you know that seminar in Mombasa? Because we have uh, seminars in Nairobi as well. Uh, we Why were, Mombasa? We keep contact through letter, not phone. Eh? Through letter, you write letter. So that vocation promoter had directed me in writing mm -hmm. that you should report on this date. Yes. And sure, when you are traveling, you travel by this bus. And sure you are leaving your place at this time because you need to leave at this time so that you arrive in Mombasa at this time. So it was as by that friend of yours. Uh, yeah. As soon as you okay. yeah, as soon mm -hmm. as you arrive there, we shall pick you. Me, I went. I went and I was I did not know anything about Mombasa. I had never been to any city in my life. But I had to to cross three cities and I arrived in Mombasa. I was there, he picked me, we started life. After some few months in Mombasa, I was asked to go to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And in Tanzania, I spent there one year. After one year, I was promoted to go to the next stage that is now academic at school to do my first degree, which yes. is in philosophy. Mm -hmm. But one minute, so for our viewers to understand, so you've gone to the seminar in Mombasa. Yes. What happens there? T take us through a little process of what happens. So you are in? Well, when you are in the, first of all, it's a seminary, not seminar. When you yeah. are in the seminary, seminary it's actually, yes. as soon as you step there the first day, mm -hmm. you start preparation and training to become a priest. Okay. So it is counted as soon as you step there the first day. Counting begins, training begins. So as soon as I arrived there, we start. Now they have to introduce you to a life that you are not used to. A life of prayer, a life of meditation, reflection, mm -hmm. a life of reading. You have to read the life of some book, the Bible and all that. And they have also to introduce you to spiritual accompaniment. You need to meet someone to speak to that person, explain what you are living, how you are feeling, what you are going through, so that that person can help you to interpret what God might be speaking to you. To and so, sometimes they can interpret and find out that maybe you are in the wrong place. Okay. You need to go back home. That's how discontinuation happens. Okay. So every time you go to explain to that person, will be keen to see how things are proceeding, whether you are happy or not, because it's not a prison. Eh? The main thing there is for you to be happy. So, so they want to be cancelled, so they know is it really your calling? You are calling. Are right. you at the right place? So you go there, and you have to do that all through your life. For how long? Uh, like that process. Now, 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 I'm still in Mombasa. So you're there. How long does it take? that process for them to say okay you are in the right track actually in Mombasa I spent there eight months eight months yeah okay, during those there? eight months they mm -hmm. they accompany you but at the same time they were preparing my papers to go to Tanzania another you need a passport eh? yes so at the same time I made an application for the passport okay but the main thing was to accompany you right they'll accompany you while looking at you Accompany you in discussion like we are talking, mm -hmm. but at the same time, 
They will look at you. They, want, they are keen to discover whether you are at the right place and whether you are happy. Whether you can persevere in that life. Because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So they will look all the details. The way you eat. The way you walk. The way you talk. The way you sit. The way you pray. The way you respond to arguments. In case, for example, someone says something that can be offensive to you, how do you respond to that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They are interested in all those details. But, make... but, yes, but from where you are coming from, with that stories, and the, if you will, for the lack of another word, the, the, the load that you are carrying, is it the one that maybe led you to go to that... Uh, at Please. one point, mm -hmm. at one point, I thought so. Mm -hmm. But later I discovered no. Okay. At one point, I thought so, but later I discovered so. But let me take you slowly. Take me. Yes. So in the seminary, mm -hmm. after that, I finish in Mombasa. I go to Tanzania. Mm -hmm. In Tanzania, they are happy with me. By the way, in Tanzania, when we arrived there, we were about 20. Okay. And only six of us were promoted. To... Continuing. It continue. Only six of us were promoted. Wow. Six of us, and mm -hmm. I happen to be among those six. Yes. I go to philosophy to the university to study, and at the same time they start, still look at you. And there I said, um, but um, I am not sure. Might it be that? Uh, the problems, the issues, the load, that load that I was carrying, the one that pushed me to be here. Mm -hmm. I asked myself that question. Yes. And how did I find the answer to that question? Ah, to find I... the answer to this question, leave these things, go back home. I left. <laughs> I packed... after, after having lived in Tanzania for how long? One year and in Uganda for, for four years. After having spent, in short, after having spent in the seminary five years, I packed my things and went back home. And? When I arrived home, I had the possibility of even traveling to the UK. I had that possibility. When you say you went back home, you went back home to your to family? My, yes, now, in Busia. Okay, now you've gone back. Mm. And here, your uncles remember they did not really want you. Now, we, on arrival. On arrival. On arrival. So you see, very happy. You see, we no, told no, you. They are not happy. They, mm -hmm. they, they, we told you. We warned you. You did not listen to us. You see, you have wasted your five years. You see, and uh, I, I, you kind of agreed I, with them. Yeah, I would it think seems they have a point. Uh huh. I had the possibility of going to the UK. I had the possibility of getting a job in Kenya. I had many possibilities. There was even a non-government non organization there in Busia that was willing to hire me at a good pay. <laughs> but it was clarified to me. All these incidences helped me to clarify. I went to that organization and worked for two days. Yes. I was not happy. I was not happy. Mm -hmm. With all the promise of good pay and all that, I was not happy. No, I went back home. My uncle had organized, see if we can help you, you also can join the armed forces. They organized and they got even the letter, if you want to go to join, the letter came. That day when I was supposed to travel to go, I was sick. Stop right there. <laughs> now, you are back. Yes. You've given up. You know, this is not your calling, so you're back. Yeah, I better, maybe what pushed me to go into these things because of the issues I had, because yeah. uh, I needed to go, because uh, I was running away from problem. it's better I go back home uh, and try to do something else. I'm okay, now so back at home. Yes. Your superiors at the seminary, what did they do? Evans has left. After being with us for five it years, was what did they big, do? It was such a big struggle, first of all, to convince them that I want to go home. Okay, when it you, was who, a who big, did you tell? The superior of the house. 
So because you, came, you cannot you... just walk out like that because okay. these are people you've been living with for five years. There are people who have been like your fathers. You, are, you have, have built a relationship with them. You have to go and explain your struggle. Okay, so I want to picture myself now. You've gone there to uh -huh. the office. Yeah. What did you tell them? I tell them, you see, uh, uh, now this is, uh, father, you see, father, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I have been reflecting for many years and uh, it's like I'm struggling a lot to be here. And I will, I'm requesting if you can allow me to, to go back home to reflect on my vocation. That man, the first question he asked me, what, did, what will I tell my superiors? You have always been the best student. What will I tell them? Then you see, Father, mm -hmm. uh, there's no need of remaining here and continue struggling. Mm -hmm. No need? What do you mean by that? Struggle, yeah. You have been praying very well. He was banging the table. You have been praying very well. In manual work, you are doing very well. At school, you are working very hard. You are doing well. Everything you are doing well. What do you mean by struggling? Which, what do you mean? Tell me. Yeah. And the man was very serious, so much such that I saw some tears coming out of his eyes. But I was very firm. I told him, Father, just allow me for some days to go and compose myself. Mm -hmm. If I find it necessary to come back, I'll come back. And did you tell one of your friends, father, there? I, I never. Oh, okay. We just met at home. I told you, you know what? Mm -hmm. I came back. So I arrived, I arrived at home and my uncles received me the way they received me. Of course, they were pointing fingers at me, trying to remind me that we told you, but you insisted. Now you see, said, uh, I tried to work with that organization. It did not work. This letter to go to become an army officer, mm -hmm. the letter came, I'm invited to report. That day I'm supposed to go. Yeah, again, I was for sick. the sake of our viewers. Now you've told uh, the, the big father your sentiments that you have to go back. Did they give you a timeline? Like, okay, go for one month, think about it and uh, come back. Well, they did not give that because they cannot. Bec you see, this is someone who is going through... A, some difficulties you cannot determine that it the will time. take one month or yes. so they released me mm -hmm. but uh, with a lot of struggles so how what did they tell you you can go but they actually the releasing was not that of you can go mm -hmm. he just at one point he kept quiet and then after some time he told me there's nothing i can do do whatever you want and for me, I was just waiting for anything to come from my, his mouth, then I go. Okay. I did not care whether he releases me or not. I just wanted to hear anything from his mouth. As soon as he said, you do whatever you want now, mm -hmm. I left. Good. So now you've tried the job. Fast forward, you've tried the job. It didn't to go to report to the army, I got sick and I could not travel. I say, well, then, uh, but I looked, I, said, I, I looked at my life, I said, but you see, since when I came from the seminary, I don't know if you, uh, you know, you see, like a goat back at home, mm -hmm. I know you know this, mm -hmm. the way we graze our goats, yes. we use a rope, mm -hmm. we tie maybe on the feet or mm -hmm. on the, the, the neck. neck, and we, we peg that rope somewhere. So that that God can only grace within some circumference. Yes. Uh, so when I was at home, mm -hmm. I was like that God. I was just grazing within some circumference. Yes. I went every day to the church. When anything was in the ch I created reasons just to remain in the church. The priest liked me. And the priest called me and said, by the way, can you come tomorrow to do this and this? Said, oh, yes, Father, why not? I go, I do this. Little did I know that the priest was making all efforts to ensure that I remain where I am pegged. But I thought he just wanted some help, so I was going. Mm -hmm. I do whatever I do, I go back, I do it. When I reflected, I noticed that, but by the way, I have been going to the church every day. 
and I spend much of the time at, at the church. But how do I always feel when I'm in the church? At peace. Yeah, but that church now near your village, mm -hmm. did they know that you just came? Yeah. Oh, they knew? I, yeah. Ah, okay. You cannot hide. You cannot hide. I, they knew and uh, many of them will not always take that one lightly. They say, ah, he's a failure. We knew we could not go far. We knew. We knew that's not for him. We knew they'll speak things like that. But sometimes you have to block the ears mm -hmm. and concentrate on what is inside. True, true. I remained in the church, remained in the church, remained in mm -hmm. the church. And after some time I realized I may deny and pretend to go there and there and there. But it seems this is my place. This is your place. I went to approach the priest. I said, can I speak to you? He said, why not? I said, you see, Father... Uh, since when I came back to the seminary, I've been trying many things, but things are not working, and I feel uh, like maybe I need to go back to the chair. Then he, before I finished my statement, he told me, I was waiting for that. I knew you will come. <laughs> ah. Then we talked, and we talked, and he guided me, mm -hmm. and uh, by coincidence, uh, I, I was walking around in town, and I met a friend who gave me the contact of now, the congregation that I belong right now today. Yeah, but when you left um, uh, the seminary, how long did you stay outside? Like approximately how long? Three years. Three years? Yes. So what were you doing those three years? Nothing in the church. Really? Okay. Yeah. Three That's good what, years. And I tried everything that was possible. So you realized this does not work for And you. I had all possibilities to do other things. I had all possibilities. Yes. Yeah. Three years. Okay. And after those three years, it became very clear to me that I'm pegged somewhere. Yeah. I have to graze within that circumference. Right. I talked to, the, to a gentleman I met and gave me the address of this congregation that I belong to today. Mm -hmm. I communicated to them and they behaved as if they have been waiting for me all these days. <laughs> As soon as I sent the first communication, they replied immediately. And I sent another one, they replied, they invited me, come. And when I went, I felt at home. I said, ah, this is what I was looking for. So what did you tell I them? I felt at home. What did you tell them? Of course, before they will engage you and try to find out about you. Because you have to explain, I have been in the seminary, this is what went through, I went through, I decided by myself to leave, this is what the, I explain all those things, mm -hmm. all my history and all everything you have to put on the table. Yes. Because they have to know you the way you are, so that they make an informed decision, whether to accept you mm -hmm. or not to accept you. So when I explain to them, I say, they say, okay. Well, we are not sure, but since you knew you are interested, give it a try and see if you'll be happy or not. If you are not, uh, uh, when I gave it a try, I felt at home. I felt this is the right place that I need mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. I started my journey, okay. and that journey has taken 10 years. Yes. After that, since yes. the day I joined this congregation. When did you join uh, the, the congregation? I began a connection and a discussion with them in 2012. 2012, yes. But I began the official journey with them training in 2013, February, okay. 2nd right. of February 2013. Mm -hmm. And it took me 10 years to be ordained. I was ordained in February 2023. So Father Evans, you were ordained here in Canada? I was ordained as a deacon here in Canada in Laval. Yes. And after that, I went back to Kenya to prepare for priestly ordination. Mm -hmm. And I was ordained as a priest on 11th February 2023 in my diocese. Yes. Having journeyed through all these things, I have some things to tell people. I was and going that's to, what I please, would like to share now. Please do. Sometimes when we go to pray, we tell God something. I want this, I want this, I want this. We make our request to God. 
Sometimes when we make this request, it's like we don't expect him to answer us, such that when he answers us, we are not aware that he is answering us. I prayed, asking God if he helps me to pass the exam, I'll be there for him. He answered the prayer and it reached one time I doubted whether it was that answer or I'm the one who was speaking to myself to join the seminary. Mm -hmm. Looking through my experience, I relate that with many instances when I have prayed, asking God for something. For example, I have many times prayed asking God to use me as his instrument. The same, same God provides some facilities yes. for me. I end up not using them in the intended purpose because I never understood that it is God answering the prayer. I don't know what those who are listening to me might have prayed for, they have gone through. Mm -hmm. But may, my message would be, mm -hmm. each one of us has a purpose in life. That purpose, the author is God. Yes. He has authored it in a, a particular way such that as soon as you recognize and realize that way, you feel at peace. You will be happy. Thank you, Father Evans, Masahalia, for your invaluable insights mm -hmm. with regards to today's topic, bitterness and gratitude. And I believe uh, our amazing viewers, you must have been inspired and encouraged. Never lose hope. You've seen what Father Evans have gone through and he's still standing through the grace of God Almighty. Thank you very much for watching us. My name is Jane Yoike. I am the host of uh, Next Level Show brought to you by none other than Baraza Media Television. Please do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to subscribe to all our social media platform for more content. Until we meet again, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Bye-bye. Merci. Relax.